Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> um, it's always uh, said that if you speak last, you got a problem. Because everything to be said has already been said. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, but just let me allow me to make a few remarks. Um, first and foremost, our world is getting smaller and smaller every day. That makes us compelled to live with each other more closely. The space is getting narrower for all of us. Therefore, we need to cooperate with each other in order to live peacefully in a, uh, in a period of more dialogue, more understanding, more cooperation, more support to each other. And every kind of uh, interdependence or every element of interdependence should be with us. In that sense, we need to understand each other better. As my Norwegian colleague very well uh, uh, expressed. We need to leave aside all our prejudices. We need to help each other. We need to forget about extremism. We need to know that if we don't share, if you do, if you do not just observe uh, those needs that I have been telling you, I think then the challenge gets bigger and bigger. And one time may come, it will just swallow all of us into it, sucks everyone into it. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I think um, in recent days, especially, we have really been going through a very difficult time. You may be living 10,000 kilometers away from our own region. 10,000 kilometers away. I just want all of you to take a moment and think about where we are. That's Turkey. We are in the middle of every difficult problem, every conflict, every challenge that may come into your uh, mind. Starting from Syria, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Middle East, Lebanon, Libya, Tunisia, Balkans, Caucasus, we're right in the middle. So, the best tool that we can use as we are trying to demonstrate is our soft power. I'm not talking about the smart power. I think there is no alternative, or there is no such alternative anymore. We have to have a small, uh, uh, I think, uh, soft power. By force, by some extremist uh, uh, policies or moves, you may not just communicate any of your uh, uh, thoughts or uh, I think 
beefs to anyone. The only thing is the engagement, dialogue, and everything uh, that I proudly would say Islam teaches us. And which are, I think, eloquently put forward by my South African colleague. And I thank him uh, all that. Day. And one last word <coughs> we don't have any better alternative. We don't have any alternative, not better, not worse. We have to, I think, try to embrace each other. We have to try to understand each other. We have to try to love each other. We have to respect each other. We have to help each other. <coughs> so these things, these values, we have to forgive each other. We have to ask forgiveness for, for the things that we have done, uh, we may have done wrong. We have to say sorry. We have to just ask for, uh, I think, help. We have to apologize. These are the human values. We don't have any other alternative. Therefore, today, as we sit and have our iftar dinner, these are the things, at least in my lifetime, from my childhood until now, that, uh, that <coughs> are told to us by our elderly people. So that's how we try to share these, I think, teachings uh, within a, a, such a friendly and peaceful if they're night. And we have to learn it from each other. Everybody has something to learn from, from the other. In that sense, I want to express my heartfelt uh, appreciation and thanks to Rumi Forum and also Turkic American Alliance for co-hosting this wonderful night in order to try to uh, display to you how we do our own iftar nights and how how much we can uh, just come closer from uh, every representative from every walk of life. So I thank you very much and I thank all my colleagues who are present here. I want to thank also the members uh, uh, of, of the administration from White House to State Department and from other agencies uh, coming and sharing this festive divine night with us. Thank you very much.